Lies of P has quickly become one of my personal favorite games of all time. After completing my first playthrough, I quickly realized how much I really wanted to try out some different types of challenge runs in the game. Just go, just hold sprint. That leads us to today's video. I am not going to be leveling anything in this Lies of P playthrough. This means no character levels, no weapon or legion arm upgrades, or any of the P organ upgrades. Ah! Starting out, I am given a choice on which class I want to start as. All the classes start at the same level, so we are going to freely choose whichever one will benefit us the most. I decide to start with the Sweeper class, as it favors a high capacity stat. This stat allows us to wear more equipment without the burden of being overweight, which will slow down our movement and dodging. Slow, chat, slow. We move quickly through the first area and head into our first boss fight of the game, the Parade Master. This boss is basically unchanged from a normal playthrough, as the player has to take this boss down without leveling the character anyway. So we take down the boss and head into the hotel and proceed further into the game. We quickly progress through the start of the game and come to the Alchemist Bridge where we are confronted with the Mad Donkey. Donkey! The Donkey is a simple enough of a boss this early on in the game, but my strategy was basically to bait out certain combos so that I could safely punish him with a backstab. I actually amazingly pull this one off first try, but I promise guys there won't be too many first tries in this challenge. So we're going to take him when we get him. That was really close. We continue past the bridge and almost are immediately met with yet another boss. However, a much, much tougher one, the Scrapped Watchman. Alright, let's see. Before entering the boss arena, we loot a chest that contains the Puppet Destroyer Amulet, which increases damage dealt to puppet-type enemies by 10%. Scrapped Watchman is no pushover. This boss is a real test to the player's ability at this point in the game. This boss offers a large set of fast combos as well as undodgeable attacks, which forces the player to perform a perfect parry to avoid it. I die a few times to the Scrapped Watchman, but we eventually take it down before heading back to the hotel to progress the game's story. While at the hotel, we talk to Geppetto for the first time, and we are forced to interact with the P-Organ. Now, here's where I need to be real with you guys. At this point in my run, I wasn't still completely sure what kind of run I was going to do. At first, I thought I just wasn't going to level my character, but I would level my weapons and the P-Organ. So at this point in time, I leveled the P-Organ a single time to give my character one single extra pulse cell for healing. However, with my confidence high from the previous defeats of the early game bosses, I neglect to level up my weapon while at the hotel. This is the point of the game where I realize I don't want to actually level my weapons along with my character. And on top of that, this is also going to be the only time I level the P-Organ for the rest of the playthrough. With all of this out of the way, we head off towards Vanini Works. Vanini. The factory is easy enough to navigate through, and we easily do the early game dungeon and arrive at the boss, Fuoco. Fuoco is a pretty difficult early game boss. It forces the player to learn different combos with potential different follow-ups. A really good early game boss, in my opinion. The phase two spews oil on the ground that will ignite and explode if the boss attacks near the oil blobs. After quite a few tries, we managed to finally take down the furnace boss. This didn't take too long, but I'm definitely starting to notice the difficulty spike with no levels. Exiting Vanini Works and moving forward, we are met with a locked cable car guarded by the Atoned. The Atoned is a humanoid boss fight that deals decay damage to the player. This is a pretty basic encounter here, and we quickly take down the Atoned hop in the cable car, and head up the mountain towards St. Frangelico Cathedral Chapel. We quickly run through the path leading to the church, cross a bridge, and enter the chapel. Navigating the rafters of the church, we reach a mandatory encounter with a green carcass monster. It takes us a couple tries, but we are able to take him down and enter the library. The library itself isn't too bad to run through, but what we want is to talk to a very important NPC, Aliadoro. This NPC gives us the ability to purchase boss weapons, as well as boss souls amulets. These amulets are some of the best in the game, so they will play a very important role in our journey. After talking to Aliadoro, it sends him back to the hotel, where he will remain for us to use as a vendor for the rest of the playthrough. After we finish up with the NPC, we reach the boss of the dungeon, the Archbishop Andreas. 
Andreas is definitely the point in the game where it steps up the difficulty. Andreas has a super large character model and tends to be very aggressive in combat. This seems to always lead me to be stuck up against a wall while trying to fight the boss. This would give me weird camera angles that I wasn't used to and would lead to many, many deaths. There are also very similar undodgeable attacks that are extremely hard to tell apart from each other. I managed to finally take down phase one, but only to realize how hard phase two would be. In phase two, Andreas gains a humanoid figure with a spear on the backside of his character model with its own unique moveset. The side I decide to fight is the same side as phase one, as I found the attacks a little easier to read. What made learning phase two difficult is that there are a lot of attacks that are the same as phase one attacks, but with slight variation in the speed of the attack. I spent a good three hours here at this boss, but I was finally able to take it out. Here is the attempt we got the kill. A lot of really tough fights. How was your day, Zulu? Was it good? <clears throat> nah, if I could... No, maybe not. No. Static! What's up, dude? How you doing, man? Hell yeah, piano. How is it, Static? I didn't know what was happening in my head.
Yes! Let's fucking go, dude! After taking out the Archbishop, I return to the hotel to pick up the weapon from the boss soul that we're going to be using for the rest of the playthrough. And this weapon is the Trident. The Trident is my favorite weapon in the entire game. It has a fantastic moveset paired with the ability to have a 30% chance of a critical attack happening every time you attack with the weapon. Since we aren't leveling our weapons, I think the crit chance on the Trident is going to be our best bet overall in the run. We return to Andreas's boss room with our new weapon and head through the Path of Pilgrim and end up in Malum District. After heading through Malum District, we are met with an encounter with the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. The Black Rabbit Brotherhood are a gank boss fight with one main enemy along with its three younger siblings. After dealing enough damage to the main boss, another one of the siblings joins the fight. My plan in the fight is to not deal any damage to the main boss, so the first sibling never spawns. I want to perfect parry the boss until I break the boss's weapon. Breaking the boss's weapon from perfect parries will cause us to receive reduced damage from the broken blade. Each of the siblings have a unique moveset associated with them. The idea is to nullify the main boss's damage by breaking the weapon, then try and deal and learn with the sibling's moveset as they enter the fight. All in all, I spent a little under two hours on this boss fight, and here's the winning attempt we got. Bring it on. You ain't seen nothing like my brother. Leave me, Bobby. <clears throat> oh, no, knock him out, bro. Knock him out, bro. Honestly, it's kind of useless. The whole fucking hookshot shit. If there was a stagger, maybe, but like, what the fuck's the point of it? Yeah, get over here! If I die right now to this garbage, I will scream bloody murder. Well, that helped, actually. Dude, I will chip you away, bro. Don't think I won't.
After dealing with the Black Rabbit Brotherhood, we return to the hotel to receive a key that unlocks the entrance to Rosa Isabella Street. The street leads us to a mandatory NPC boss fight with the White Lady. I actually somehow managed to first try this boss by fishing for backstabs on her poke attacks, and we cruise right along to the theater, housing the boss fight with the King of Puppets. I think the theater is actually one of my favorite areas in the game to explore and go through casually. I just really enjoy the layout of it, as well as all the puppets being buffed by the larger enemies, the bigger puppets like above. I thought that was just a really cool idea that worked well. As far as the King of Puppets goes, let's just say we were here for a solid eight hours. This boss really pushed me to the limit. In phase one, you really have to deal with the full moveset as we are dealing very little damage overall at this point. In the first phase, it has a second phase where he gains a much wider moveset. The moveset is really well done by the game, in my opinion. Some of the attacks that you can perfect parry will push the player back even upon a successful parry. This really tells me that the game wants the player to use the dodge mechanic on these attacks more rather than the parry mechanic, as shown by the player being pushed back away from the boss. Really good job by the devs to teach the player the optimal way to do the fight. Phase 1 is absolutely no joke, but even after getting Phase 1 down enough to get to Phase 2 with Romeo, we still have to learn Romeo himself, which is no easy task. Romeo is a really, really well-designed boss, with lots of single swipe combos, very cool aerial attacks, this boss has it all, and it took a really long time to learn how to deal with him. My biggest issue with this phase is that Romeo has an attack that he will start to do while at 50% HP. This attack kind of reminds me of Millennia's Waterfowl from Elden Ring, if you guys remember, as Romeo launches towards the player with a vicious combo of fire swipes and spins. Figuring out this combo was no easy task. Every time I got Romeo to 50%, this attack would kill me over and over and over again. This attempt, I actually managed to kill the boss, and we got super lucky that his AI, for some reason, didn't do the attack at all. I wouldn't want to think how long I would have been stuck here had this not happened. Regardless, here is the winning fight we had with the Master of Puppets. Thanks, Kool-Aid. He's had three crits in a row. Is Romeo that difficult? Yeah, he has an attack that's kind of tough, Savage. You'll see it eventually. He has an attack that keeps getting me and a lot of people. Double cracked blocks, let's go. Double block, let's go. Huge. A heal here. Like a pretender, medicine flowing through my veins. Wads at the jewel of my brain.
Any love feelers? Oh, I lived. That's so good. Chase it, hold it, feel it, never let it go. Come on! Come on! Yes, dude! Oh, buddy! After taking down Romeo, we head outside the opera house and towards the Lorenzini... The Lorenzini? Lorenzini Arcade which is a pretty brutal running section that is very maze-like and easy to get turned around in. We are met with a green carcass elite guarding a locked door in the basement of the arcade. This mini boss is pretty tough for this part of the game with our damage output. Uh, the green carcass elites progressively get more and more difficult as the game progresses and we encounter them. We do eventually manage to take down the elite and proceed through the arcade to another mini boss guarding a locked door, this time the puppet jester. I actually used the three carcass enemies locked in cages to my advantage to take down the puppet on their own so that we don't even have to engage with this scary enemy. Uh, I, I did take a few tries to get the carcasses to, to cooperate, though. <laughs> uh, anyway, we exit the arcade into the Grand Exhibition Plaza where we take the tram car into the gallery. The gallery is home to a nasty set of enemies as well as a very difficult rafter section that killed me more times than I'd like to admit. After finally getting through the rafter section, we finish the rest of the gallery and arrive at the boss fight, Victor. Victor overall wasn't too bad for us, as we spent a total of three hours on him. Victor acts like your typical grappler boss, many combos oriented around boxing punches, sumo rushes, and kicks. A pretty fair overall boss with not too many problems. My winning strategy was to not perfect parry much in this fight at all, but rather strafe and run around Victor's character model as much as I could to reach his backside. At 50% HP, Victor gains a phase two, where all his combos are more or less the same, but with a few new follow-ups as well as a couple new attacks. Overall, Victor wasn't too big of a problem for us. Here's the winning attempt we had on him. Lighting him up like ass crack! <laughs> Watch me navigate. Ha 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 ha. TP, man. Thanks for hanging out, bro. I'll try and have a good day off, dude. Thanks for hanging, man. Go get some sleep. It's late for you.
Game Pass? Nice, dude. Yeah, it's it's so worth your time. Weekend was good, just playing a lot of this. Hanging out. Normal V-Sweat stuff. Yeah, it's Aura's playlist, dude. All right, four heals, full four heals. Let's go. Yo, Corey, what up, man? Like in the rush, hell yeah, dude. Gotta love the classics. Let's go! Oh, man. Oh, let's fucking go, boys and girls! We take down Victor, and we have a quick talk with Simon Manus, who invites us to the Island of Alchemists to witness his triumph. We press forward and take a convenient tram car outside the gallery to the Baron's Swamp. We arrive at the Swamp, which is a pretty large area full of enemies but not anything we really need to pick up. So we run through it as fast as possible. I actually get stuck in this area for well over an hour, dying to pretty much every situation you could imagine. Like I said, this area is brutal. We do, however, finally get through it, and we're met with the boss of the area, the Green Monster. The Green Monster is actually one of my favorite boss fights in this game. The Phase 1 moveset is comprised of many combos and attacks, that almost all deal decay from any single one of them making contact with our character. We can limit the moveset of the green monster by staying as close as possible in phase one, which really helps with being able to control the fight. Phase one's pretty lengthy, but I quickly get the muscle memory down to start working away on phase two. Phase two is really complicated. It is an adaptation of an early game boss, the Scrap Watchman, so we see a lot of similar attacks from that boss fight. On top of that, all the attacks have different timings than the Scrapped Watchman's attacks, so it was really confusing to remember all the different timings. Not only this, but Phase 2 seemingly has a lot of attacks that wouldn't happen too often, so these attacks often caused a death on a really good attempt because I wasn't sure what I was seeing. Uh, this boss took a staggering 11 hours to take down. Here is the attempt of us finally getting the kill.
first coffee for the day. That's a good brew. Yeah, yeah, reasonable. We'll hit list this game. We will. Nice. Let's go. Hit list phase one. Hi, Faresha. Thanks for five, man. Really appreciate it. I'm focused. Hold on. Eight months. What a ride. Fuck you. Fuck you. Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Yes! Upon taking down the green monster, we are taken back to the start of the game to Krant Central Station. We progress through the station and emerge into the plaza where we find yet another mandatory green carcass elite. This one is the final Carcass Elite of the run, and the nastiest of them all. We die quite a bit here because of the massive HP pool and the huge damage he deals to us, but we do finally manage to take him down and progress to Collapsing Krat. Collapsing Krat is home to many difficult enemies and a running section filled with Disruption Crystals, which will one-shot our character if the bar fills up all the way. We also have to take down a unique enemy blocking the progression, this enemy is a very aggressive, head-bonking enemy, combined with being forced to fight him in this really small room, causes us to die many times. We do eventually take it down and move forward to the next boss of the run, which is the Walker of Illusions. The Walker didn't take too long overall, I think it only took about two hours. The Walker isn't too bad of a boss, that is, until it splits itself into two. Two, forcing you into a gank fight. The walker's moveset is comprised solely of combos full of very fast swipes, as well as a shockwave attack that causes disruption buildup as well as clearing all poise damage built up against it. Overall, there wasn't too much to say about this boss, so here's the attempt of us taking it out. Actually, but he's really good at it.
One of my all-time favorite games, Shet Williams, dude. GG question mark? Not yet. After defeating the illusion, we learn that the hotel is under attack and that we need to return to it as soon as possible. However, there is a boss guarding the entrance to the hotel, the corrupted parade leader. The parade leader is a boss adaptation of the tutorial boss, the parade leader. The difference is this boss causes decay damage as well as summons a mob to aid it in battle. The moveset is not identical to the original Parade Master fight, but we see some attacks have some new follow-ups or variations from the original. I found one of my best punish windows was when he would throw a tantrum on the ground, as this attack has a ton of cooldown and room for punish. In total, we spent four hours fighting this guy. Here's our winning attempt. Yeah, the PlayStation 5 Pro Controller is so nice, so if anything gets broke, I just buy a new piece. It's so good. Oh, really, Morin? Huh.
That was actually really close to hitting me. a good try. Up against the wall. Downloaded, dude. Absolutely fucking dealt with. So what's happening now? We make it back to the hotel to find it in shambles, and we learn that Geppetto has also been kidnapped. We take the secret passage behind the painting of Antonia to the relic of Trismegistrus. Tr <sighs> this running section is very short and leads to our second encounter with the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. This encounter is much different from our first encounter with them, as this time we are met with fighting all three of the siblings at once. On top of this, each of the siblings imbue their weapon with different statuses. At this point of the game, getting hit by a single attack will be enough to cause one of the statuses to be applied to our character immediately, making this fight extremely frustrating. When there is only one of the siblings left, the older brother emerges from the coffin to aid the final sibling. My idea was to get two of the siblings down to roughly one hit before they die so that I can finish both of them off at the same time so that we can engage the eldest in a 1v1. I took advantage of items in the boss arena, in particular this pile of garbage bags. These garbage bags allowed me to keep distance between me and the eldest brother during combat. I also had traveled back to the Baron's Swamp to pick up the recharge amulet, an amulet that passively regains one HP per second. Since we spend a lot of time per attempt at this boss, this amulet really played a big role moving forward in this run. Having passive HP regained saved me countless times. We also head back to Malum District to kill this carcass elite enemy that has the patience amulet, which will recover our stamina faster. In total, we spent a total of six hours on the Black Rabbit Brotherhood 2 fight. Here's the final attempt we took him down. What if it's just boiled chicken and white bread? Sounds perfect to me, Piano. Sounds like an ideal fucking sandwich to me. Alright, this attempt's super good so far.
Nice. This is for my brother. I'm gonna rip your heart. This attempt is cooked. Like really good. I'm just gonna heal next time I get a chance because I feel like there's no reason not to. This runs decent. Well, I mean, it's really good. Ah! Don't fumble here. Look at this sword placement. Get out of here. Focus again, not looking at chat. Hold on, hold on. Don't fumble this. Direct insults from a streamer? Oh, dude, that's yikes. Sorry, you had to go through that. Oh, this is gonna kill. Halfway.
Did he just roll? I don't think I've seen him do that before. Not getting greedy. Yeah, that's why, dude. I had a feeling. I had a fucking feeling, man. Fuck you. Fuck out of here. After taking down the Black Rabbit Brotherhood for the second time, we board a submarine and make our way to the Alchemist Isle, home to Manus. But before we reach Manus, we have to traverse the Isle. Upon landing in the submarine, we travel across a somewhat sand desert and arrive at the Arkabi entrance. The entrance, however, is guarded by the Door Guardian, which is a gimmick boss fight. After dealing about 1100 damage to its leg, it will topple over, allowing us to deal massive damage via a fatal attack. We easily dispose of the door guardian. Here is the attempt of us taking him down. No follow up, right? Okay. Yeah, I've been doing them. Yeah, like right here. We have four cats, Bruda. Huge. Roll forward. Well, I was right. Huge. Huge! It's so good to bait him into that just so I can wait. Oh, he has four now? He's crazy. He's unhinged. Oh yeah, keep the, keep it up, dude. Keep it up. Oh yeah, do it again. What? What? I'm so scared right now, chat. I'm so scared. He's gonna roll or some shit. Ah, oh, dude, I'm so scared. Fuck, man. Fuck. 
Yeah, I... Mm, I'm just going in. Oh my god. Are we winning? I think we win. GG. The Abbey is a very, very long running section filled with ballistas, giant elite enemies, and basically every mini boss from the base game. This area is absolutely no joke, and we are going to avoid as much of the elites and tough enemies as possible. We struggle bus our way to the top of the Abbey after about two hours of dying while trying to climb it. After reaching the top, we open the door to the scariest boss of the game, Luxatia. Luxatia is very, very, very tanky. Our damage is so low, we barely even scratch her. However, there is a mechanic in this boss fight that you might not have heard of. If you manage to perfect parry the boss enough times, 62 times for us to be exact with our setup, you can break her weapon and it'll start phase 2 immediately without even having to lower her HP. The 62 perfect parries was by far the fastest and easiest method here, so I began trying to chip away at phase 1 and learn all the timings to all of her combos so that we could get our free pass to phase 2. In phase 2, she is extremely fast and very unpredictable. She also shoots a lot of lightning at the player, which the player can perfect parry back at Luxatia, a lot of like the Ganon fight in uh, Ocarina of Time Zelda. I chose to run and avoid straight up combat in phase 2, as she was simply too fast for me to learn anything about the phase before I was promptly killed. While running from combat, I would wait for her to shoot lightning at us so that I could parry it back at her to deal damage. This was my winning strategy, and after 10 hours of attempts, we finally got this one here where we got her. No time for fucking math. You are correct. I don't remember, Suki. Oh, wait, are you talking about the Penetrator or Pursuer from... Because the Pursuer's in DS2. The Penetrator's in Demon Souls. Please follow it up. Thank you. Stop reading chat. I gotta focus. What's up, Brylin? Friday, man. How you doing? Phase two's coming soon here, guys. Here we go. Full H. Yeah, we'll see what we're at after this. Uh, 
Help twice, fuck it. Fine. Run back. Run at me. Block, doesn't matter, just run away. Gotta, gotta hit this. After her. Do not stop. Space. HP's good. Weapon's good. Back. <laughs> oh, I'm so oh my god, man. Oh my god, man. My hands are drenched right now. I am f I'm fucking Oh, eliminated. Eliminated. Oh. After taking down the best boss of the game, we are met with one final running section to the final boss of the game, Simon Manus. Manus gets somewhat of a bad rap in this game as he follows such a spectacle of a fight with Luxatia. He almost seems underwhelming in comparison. However, let me tell you, it was this boss that took us the longest to defeat. By a pretty large margin as well. This boss took us 15 grueling hours to take down. Phase 1 is not by any means a free fight to learn and master. Manus has many different combos with many different follow-ups, variations, and weird timings. He also has a lot of attacks that share a very similar animation, but they have completely different timings, making this boss fight an extremely tough one at low damage. Phase 1 takes quite a while to take down, even while playing optimally. This is what makes it take a very long time to learn anything about Phase 2. 
Phase 2 is comprised of Manus's moveset in Phase 1, but with slight change-ups and alterations to his melee. Combined with his melee, Manus will now cast spells, making the fight very hard to manage your character's position to dodge everything coming at you. Even after taking Manus Phase 2 down to the 60% threshold, he will go into another phase where a giant hand will cause an AoE explosion, along with all the other chaos happening. This hand happens once every 20 seconds or so, so you really need to be mindful of your character's position in the arena while fighting him. All in all, I think Manus is a really fun boss, but a very frustrating one to do at this low of damage and HP. Here is the final attempt where we actually got him taken out. Sunday, you got a lot of bits today, dude. Um, babes? Um, babes? Why did the safety manager insist that a big pile of LSD be removed immediately from the factory floor? Why? He felt it was a real tripping hazard. Just. Like. <laughs> fucking. Wow. Right. Underscore? Right. Thank you for 100 bits, Ascended. Appreciate it. Such a good joke. Yo, Boxo. Because he hasn't went on a BRB yet. Yeah, we'll be here instead. But I bet you, I wonder if he doesn't, like, I wonder if he knows the backups that he needs to get, you know? I hope he does. Hope he knows the backups. No, nah, JC, no, they don't. Oh fuck, I'm not sure where I am here, Hob, right now, yeah. Hey, sweat. Hi. Here's some lore. The okay. singer we're listening to right now is the clean singer on my song, Spite. Mike Zemeski is the man. That's so cool, Kool-Aid. Sounds familiar. He taught you how to sing? That's sick. Hell yeah, man. I can assure you, Wilkie, there's places that Hobbs going right now that he's never been to in the game before. I can assure you that much.
Yeah, you can, JC, yeah. Damn, Descent, you did good then, bro. I'm gonna focus, though. This is a good run. Yeah, Gino's not saying four is enough because he's wrong, but he's got to remember he's talking to Hob. He needs a backup. He definitely needs more than four. This is bad. Oh my god, I blocked it. No, I didn't! It got the glitch again on that attack. But I didn't die. Holy shit, what a banger. This is PB. I die here, sadly. It was a good run, though. Okay. That's fun. <clears throat> okay. on the wrong button. Oh. Yep. Okay. Come on! Yes! Oh! Oh, guys, it feels fucking so good! 
I used this run to practice for my upcoming no-hit run of this game, where we will complete Lies of P without taking a single instance of damage from any mob or boss in the game. Because of this, we do not do the optional boss fight Nameless Puppet in this challenge. If you made it to the end of this video, consider subscribing, giving the video a like. Let me know about your favorite boss fight in Lies of P in the comments. If you're interested in seeing the grind for us to get the Lies of P hitless run, come hang out live on my Twitch. The link's in the description. Thanks for enjoying the video, guys. And as always, have a good day.